Be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome again back to the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, where our guest today is Mr. Cal Henry, president of the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs. And we're sort of fo focusing on the responsibility of elected officials. And as it, as it talks to the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Constitution of the United States. And um, if, you've, if you've missed part of the show, I would suggest that you look at the dates that were, were, were laid out there just, just after the break. And, and, uh, and please get the first part of the show. It's very, very important. So anyway, we were right back and we're talking about of the people, by the people, and for the people. That's what this country was all about, and that's what this Constitution basically reflects as far as its definition. And we were just getting into uh, how did we get off track, if you will, during this particular period of time and the fact that uh, we, have a, we have President Obama who happens to be an African American, but he's an American. And, uh, and, and the fact that things have sort of like... Uh, gone astray. People have been allowed to do things that uh, uh, under the Constitution were sort of like uh, you're just in, in the uh, counter, if you will, to, to some of the definitions that have been given out to the Constitution from what little I've heard and what little I've read about the Constitution and some of the things that have been happening. So let's, start, let's go back to, uh, to back where, where you had where just sort of stomped off talking about the responsibilities, if you will, of Congress. and. And, and, and then we got media there involved in this whole piece, and, and the public is sitting out there basically going through another political campaign. Yeah. Well, let me say this, that the United States, the, the people of the United States, have not completely healed from the effect of slavery on this country. Hmm. Why did you say that? Because what we're having today, what we're seeing today, is... Uh, somewhat a rudiment of, of that beginning. See, people want to pretend that slavery never existed in the United States. And sometimes people want to pretend uh, that it wasn't that bad for black people in the, in the United States, black America. See, and oftentimes black Americans don't want to talk about it very often. And we need to. Uh, see, I often say to to other blacks is that when you understand uh, the impact of slavery on our people and recognize why our people went through such a horrendous situation, then you have to recognize the strength of a people. And oftentimes we have let people define things to us in a weak fashion rather than in a, in a strong position. Mm -hmm. See, it took people strong to begin to recognize that they would go through all this stuff so that their children and their grandchildren and their descendants would be, would be in a better position to do some things. My, my survival and my action and my duty is based upon the back of other people who preceded me. Mm -hmm. And I have to recognize that and be willing to share, that, share my black humanity with whoever is willing to listen. So how do we so how do we get out of that? I mean, you know, no. it's pretty well do documented today. In fact, it's now it's electronically documented. Uh, is it maybe it's a lack of the education, if you will, within our education system? Uh, what, what's the deal? Well, well, see, I I believe there's two of our institutions have served all the people not very well, yeah. 
and that is uh, education institutions, our institution is meaning one, and our legal system. Legal system. Legal. Legal, legal system. system. Legal. Okay. Okay. Because in many ways, both of those institutions have kept us in a situation of thinking of one group being in an inferior position and others being in a superior position. And, and, and to go into that would cause another long delay, a yeah, discussion yeah, yeah. another we'll time. We'll do that again. Okay. Another time. But, but the rudiment of not educating our people to understand that we're in this thing together and we have to work together, be able to, and we still see people thinking that we're not in it together. And our legal system seems to be thinking that if, you, if you're black and you know, you know, we don't have to honor all those legal rights to everybody. Uh, those civil rights. I remember once when I was teaching the class and I asked my students to uh, to look at some commonalities in what all the citizens in, in the country have together. It was very difficult for them to come to the fact that we all have the same civil rights in this country. Uh, and, 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 to, and, and to, until you help people understand that, then they'll never get there, and we have to be willing to do that. But in, in order to be able to look at what was going on in Congress, we have people in Congress who don't see all the people the same. Now, they, don't may, they may disagree with me, and, and I will allow that to happen, but when you begin to see somebody jump up and say, we want to make sure this guy is a one-term president, not because of his policies or because of anything that he's done or not done, well, bec primarily because of what he looked like. And, and, and uh, we need to understand that's what these people are saying. But isn't this not a political environment that we're in? I mean, shit. No, no, but everything is, is you see, I believe everything is politics and politics okay. is everything. Okay. But, 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 but that's a different way other people are looking at what politics is like. Will you, I, in a, see, you might say you're influencing me, but I'm saying I'm playing politics with you to get you to do what I want you to do. But, but in many instances, we have to understand that if we're going to grow as a nation to be able to lead the rest of the world, some of the people that people look at are people that look like you and me. Now, when I was in Turkey, there were a lot of people in Turkey were willing to tell me, I'm glad you guys did what you did in terms of changing the civil rights movement going on in this country. But what I'm getting at is that we have to be able to understand that we're in here and we're working together to make this country what it is. See, when I was telling you about people uh, being at the table as members of Congress, they are at the table as members of Congress. They don't have to go out and sign. They should not have to go out and sign something from somebody else out there to be able to, be, to feel that they are, they, are, they are worth something. They have to speak up and understand that. See, I think when people wrote the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Which is? What, what does it say, basically? Well, the, the 14th Amendment, as it's, in which I'm dealing with, uh, or sharing with, with regard to the debt crisis, mm -hmm. the debt of the United States is unquestionable. Okay. See, but in the process of dealing with that, um, it also says that... Uh, members of Congress who sort of incites uh, insurrection or rebellion, uh, that there's, there's a place for them. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe it's not at the table. Now, I, I think that the 14th Amendment gives the, the, the President of the United States an opportunity to see uh, whether Congress are living up to their duties or not in this regard of paying the debt. They are responsible for paying the debt. And uh, that portion of the Constitution requires some action, I think, that to hold people of Congress ac accountable. Now, but that's I, not the way it was portrayed. Well, well, who's doing the portraying? Well, you got media and uh, Congress. Well, well see, but, but, but I, think, I think people are beginning to see it a little bit different now since we wrote the, pres uh, the Attorney General and shared our writing with the President and also with have Congress. It, have they gotten back to you? They no, no. I, well, I, I think the President has responded in a way. I, I know that he said to Congress that the only, uh, the only players they ought to be making is their oath of office. Now, if you go back and read some, some of this stuff, I also know that there are people now 
who are who are uh, uh, who are political pundits now are saying that people are violating their oath, uh, or saying they 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 sign in an oath and they're trying to live up to that not the oath the the pledge. The people are talking about the pledge today that they didn't talk about prior to us reading this letter. I'm not going to say that one has to always answer directly to us, mm -hmm. but the, but the point is you can see things happening around us that tell you somebody is getting the message, somebody is raising the issue. If somebody is raising that issue, maybe we may get people begin to live to live up to their uh, their responsibility. I think your program here. Is, is sharing with the public an opportunity to get in and see what is the oath that these individuals are signing and are they living up to it? Are they faithfully carrying out their duties that they, the Congress decide, the Congress is supposed to be done dealing with in Article 1, Section 7 and 8 mm -hmm. when it comes to the public debt. And now we're in the process of seeing that we might see a shutdown of, Congre uh, of, uh, of the U.S. government next week if Congress doesn't pass something. And you got people saying they don't want to pass anything. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to live up to the need of the citizens of this country. I think that's wrong. I think people ought to be made aware that you got people who are there trying to not live up to the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> and, and, and that's a consequence of that. They may be trying to overthrow it. And that's what the Oregon Assembly for Black Affairs was trying to share with the uh, U.S. Attorney General and anybody else who read that document. We were trying to share with you and others mm -hmm. that what is in effect going on is an effort to overthrow the Constitution of the United States. And, uh, and, uh, and, 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 it, and it's probably embodied in who, who the Constitution is vested in. Tell me, was that part was that part of the discussion when you interviewed the some of the candidates that were running for Wu seat? Did, no, was that no. on the table at all? Uh, it did, uh, no, at, at that meeting, I was not there okay, okay. because I was at a meeting in, in Dallas, okay, Texas. Okay. But according to uh, uh, the, sponsor, uh, the uh, presenters of the meeting, okay. it did come up. It did come up. Yeah, but people sort of didn't know. They didn't want to. Uh, well, uh, the report I got was that uh, it, it, no one said one way or another. That was the report I got. See, but the point of it is, they know that people are looking at that issue. Mm -hmm. See, if, 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 if our Congress has to be willing there to serve the people. That's the point that I'm trying to make mm -hmm. uh, on behalf all of the, the people. Uh, all the people. All the people. I'm talking about all the people. Okay. We can't go back to the day that they didn't feel that like they had to serve black people in this country or other groups in this country. And I, and I use the term. Do you think that will return? Well, some people want to go back there. You think they'll go back there? Well, I share with a person uh, in Dallas. I uh, said, I'm not going back there. You know, I put my life on the line as a military person to serve all the people. Yes. I expect everybody who is in an elected position uh, to 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 address my black issues. You know, my, huh? Okay, I, I like that. I appreciate that. I, now we've got about we've got about fifteen minutes, and I'd, I'd like to get a little feedback and to the viewing audience from Oregon, from an Oregon perspective, because you, you you've you've been here and you've worked in, with this organization for a number of years, and uh, you've always had a sort of a, a definition in terms of where we were, where African Americans or Black folks were in the state of Oregon on an annual basis. You'd always make a statement. Where are we today in two thousand eleven with Black folks in the state of Oregon? Well. What do you think? I, I think we're not where we ought to be. Yeah. I know that seemed to be a roundabout answer to you in many ways. I think that uh, we are not living up to what we can really do to help ourselves as well as help the state. We're still looking for other people to legitimize us or to tell us what to do. And we need to get away from that. You know. Uh, How do we do that? How do we go about doing that? Well, well, see, see, you got to be willing to be at the table. You can go to any one of these uh, venues out there, and oftentimes we're not willing to go to the table and share our perspective. Or run for office, in some cases. In some cases. Or we, we come to the table of running for office late, and, and we have not created any alliances with anybody else. And, and we necessarily...